Tviel Frostig is a genuine statistician and computational scientist, and uh, we seduced him to, to do the uh, next study about infant exploration, human infant exploration, as a side job. But as you will see, he got uh, caught by it, and now he's uh, pushing forward to continue it. We hope to continue it uh, in, uh, in a big hospital so that we can record the behavior of many uh, human infants. This study also led to a real uh, discovery, uh, uh, but I won't tell it. I won't uh, sell the surprise at the end. But uh, as you'll see, it's a, I was fortunate to work with uh, people with such uh, capacities, uh, also with the pushing and help of Yohav Binyamini. So it's a computational study about uh, human infants' uh, exploratory behavior. Please feel. So sorry. A minute. Okay. So, um, hello, everybody. Uh, I'll present uh, the work about exploration in the presence of mother in typically and non-typically developing pre-walking human infants. So that's quite a lot, so I hope to simplify it. I'll give you my uh, point of view, which is, like I said, I was a computational henchman for uh, Ilan Golani. Uh, so first I want to thank... Uh, a lot of people that uh, collaborated on this research. Uh, first and foremost, Ilan Golani, Yoav Benzamini, Giora, and Hannah Alonim from the Mifne Center, as well as uh, the help of uh, Hagar Yudel Zirai, Saina Salomon, Derek of Kafi, Yair Wexler, and uh, Barak Brill. Okay. So we are interested in knowing if we can use the same methodology that we used on uh, animals and apply it on uh, human infants and if we can find something interesting about it. So there's a lot of differences between uh, uh, mice and, uh, and human infants, uh, but we can still try it. So a lot of, uh, uh, of the things I'll say should sound familiar, excursions, home base, uh, lingering segments, progression segments. So what was our experiment? So at each trial, we put the mother inside a room, roughly about 5.5 meters on 3.5 meters, and we told her to place her infant next to her, allowing him to freely roam the room for 30 minutes. The mother was requested to remain as passive as she can and not interact the infant, although to some mothers that was kind of difficult. So overall, we had 12 infants, which were divided into two groups, a group of TD, typically developing infants, that were recruited from the nearby villages uh, near Mifne, which is located in Rospina, and six non-typically developing uh, infants, which were referred to the Mifne Center uh, by experts. Okay, so this is the room, uh, and the first job I was hired to do was actually calibrate and adjust to the fissi that was two years ago. So we can see the room. The mother is uh, seated in the middle of the room. We have the cylinder, a basket, a cabinet, a table, and a few toys. 
So after adjusting to, after calibrating the camera and uh, uh, tracking the, the infant, we smoothed his trajectory using the C algorithm. Finally, obtaining his, uh, the path plots for each infant. So here we can see the path plots of each infant. Uh, the names are aliases, so don't worry. Uh, we can see in green where the mother was seated, and in gray the different objects of the room. So it's kind of hard to understand what's going on with this, uh, uh, from these plots. Here we have the six non-typically developing infants. And it's still, we can see that there's some differences. It looks like the non-typically developing infants are constrained into a smaller part of the room. But besides that, it's still kind of hard to understand. So we want to know how did the, the infant behave. So we want to know which place did he spend the most time at. So to, in order to solve it, we generated a heat map. We divided the the room into a grid with where each cell is one centimeter on one centimeter, counted the amount of time you spent in each cell, and then smoothed it using a Gaussian kernel. That will help us find the peaks. So here we can see the heat maps, and it suddenly becomes a lot clearer. So white means that the child didn't spend any time there. Uh, the, the more red it is, it spent more time there, and yellow means peaks. So those are the highest dwell times. And we can see that the TD infants have peaks near the mother. All TD infants have their peaks near the mother, except for one, Alexei. And we can see that the TD infants' uh, dwell time is spread across the all, all of the room. Well, if we look at the heat maps of the non-typically developing uh, infants, we can see several peaks. They're not necessarily next to the mother. Some of them are next to the object. There's one or two that ha do have peaks which are not the highest uh, near the mother. Some of the infants just seem to spend some time in the middle of the room without, not near any object or near the mother. Okay, so the heat maps helps us understand some of the behavior of the infant. But it's not enough. We want to also understand how did they accumulate that dwell time into those certain peaks? So we need to understand what is a visit. So in cases where we enter a room, it's easy. The moment I open the door and I'm inside the room, that means that I'm visiting that part of the room. But when I'm in an open space, it's hard to define what exactly is a visit. So am, am I visiting the, visiting the podium now? Am I still visiting it? So it's not so clear. And then we want to add on how to incorporate that data into our plot. So let's start by defining a visit. So I think it's pretty standard in a natural way to define a visit using a circle. So let's say I'm in this podium. I will define a circle around this podium and say that when I cross this circle, I'm visiting the podium. However, if I make small perturbations, move like this, then I will have many, many uh, visits, even though we can all agree that I'm still on, in the same visit. So in order to deal with it, we draw two concentric circles around the point of interest, and we define the visit when the infant or the subject enters the inner circle, and define the end of the visit when he leaves the outer circle. So if we would use just only one circle and we will have, for example, this trajectory, we can see that we will have, we would define three distinct visits. While if we're using the two concentric circles, we will define just a single visit. So this helps us deal with noise that is caused in, a, in an open space. As far as incorporating this, uh, 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 the data about the visit, now we can imagine that there's a clock around its peak and the arc on the circumference of the circle, it defines the length of the visit. So the clock runs from zero all the way to 100% of the session and the arc drawn on its, uh, on its circumference is the percentage of time that the infant spent at that location. So if we'll take a look at... Sorry. 
If we'll take a look at Alexei, we can see he visited the door at the beginning of the session for something like 10th of the session, then made another visit in the middle of the session, and another one at the end. So uh, now that we have that knowledge, we can try and ask ourselves, OK, how do the infants behave? So we can see that the TD infants visit uh, the mother location, or the highest peak, quite regularly. Okay, so throughout the session, there's not a long duration of time in which the infant stays away from the mother. And we can see that he visits most places uh, multiple pl uh, times and for a long duration. However, we cannot, from this plot, infer on the number of excursions because we have some circles that intersect. We can make the same plot for the non-typically developing infants. And we can see that they don't visit uh, necessarily their mother quite regularly. Uh, so we can see that Eviatar visits her only on the uh, last quarter of the session, uh, Suval only on the last third, and so on. So it's not quite regular, and we can't really see any uh, structure in it. OK, so to conclude so far, we saw that the TD infants have multiple peaks uh, of dwell time near the mother. They seem to spend more time with her and make more visits to her. The non-typically developing infants seem to be centered in a smaller part of the room, not visiting all of its extent as the TD infants. And the mother seems very important, so I, I know that it will sound pretty trivial to most of you, but you can understand it from the plot that even if you didn't know that, that, that this is a human infant and his mother, you would still understand that the mother has some importance and you want to take a closer look at it. So how would we do it? We uh, devise something that is called an uh, interaction plot. So the main idea here is that, again, we have a clock that runs from the zero proportion of the session all the way back to 100 proportion of the session. And we draw uh, the distance of the infant from the mother on, as a, a radius uh, of one of those circles. So in 65% of the session, the infant is starting to move towards the mother until he reaches 10%, uh, until he reaches 10 centimeters away from her. He stays there for uh, a considerable amount of time, and hmm? not, from her, from her for, not from her, from her center, and then he moves all the way to uh, the center of the mother, and at 95% of the session, he moves away. So this actually gives us, this plot gives us the distribution of attention of the infant to his mother. So we can see here, the A plot is for the typically developing infants, the B plot is for the non-typically developing uh, infants. And we, compare, we can, and we can now compare visually, inspect, the amount of excursions the TD infant makes to the mother and the percentage of dwell time that he spends with, uh, uh, the amount of time that he spends with the mother. And just in, at first inspection, we can see that the TD infant's plots are much darker, okay? Meaning that they spend more time with her. And we can really see now the, the the excursion that the TD infants make. So we can see that Almog is keep going back and forth to, uh, from the mother. Uh, most of the uh, uh, TD infants do it, uh, except for Dan, which spends, just spends a considerable amount of time uh, near the mother. And in contrast, the non-typically developing infants, we don't see any black parts in their plot, it's, 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 it, it has much more uh, gray parts than black parts. So we can really see that the non-typically developing make fewer uh, excursions and spend uh, less time. So now that we've seen and convinced ourselves that we have this difference in excursion and difference in uh, dwell time, we need to quantify it in some way. So how would we do it? So we will begin by looking at the distance plots of uh, the infant uh, from his mother. So the x-axis is the uh, time of the session, and the y-axis is the distance from the mother. The black 
vertical lines separate to different excursions, while the black horizontal line defines the radius we used to define the circle that is the mother. And again, we can see the same thing, that the NTD infants have less excursion. So notice this is an ad adaptable algorithm, and it determines a different radius to each mother. So how did we define uh, this radius? How did we define the boundary of an excursion? So what we want, we want something that is robust, so it, it, it doesn't change that much. So the idea is to plot uh, that the x-axis is different lengths of radiuses, and the y-axis is the number of excursions. And we want to find the longest threads of uh, radiuses values which are uh, stable. So we can see here that if you change from, 30, from the, the radius from 30 to 50, you have a lot of change. So the number of excursions differs wildly. But from 80 till uh, 95, we have at the same stretch, the same number of excursions. So we would take the minimal radius that, uh, 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 the minimal radius of that segment and that will define uh, the excursion. So you can ask, this is a heuristic algorithm and we can ask ourselves, does it work? So also some videos. So this is uh, Almog, a typically developing infant and red Red are uh, progression segments, blue are uh, lingering segments, and, uh, gr and the colored is the current excursion, and in gray uh, is the past. Okay, so overall it seems that the uh, uh, algorithm does a good job in segmenting it to excursions. We can see that uh, Almog, the TD infant, makes a lot of excursions. Okay. I will show now a non-typically developing infant. And we can see that he's less active and he uh, doesn't really make any excursions to the mother. Okay, uh, all the videos can be found in the paper, which is online, uh, so you can look. Um, okay, so it seems that we found uh, a difference in excursions. We can now uh, do any statistical uh, test to find out if they truly differ, and we found that there's a significant difference both in the number of excursions and in the dwell time. But since our claim is, well, I wouldn't say extraordinary, but it's, it's, it's provocative that the TD infants spend more, uh, that the TD infants home base is the mother, while it's not necessarily so for the NTD, we wanted to make sure that we can uh, stand behind our results. So in order to do so, we used a sensitivity analysis. So we want to find out if our results are robust to any definition of a, a visit or a, an excursion. And to do so, we took again the, uh, the x-axis here are the, the radius that defines the circle of the mother, uh, the upper plots, the y-axis is the percentage of dwell time, and we can see on the left an individual curve for each infant, and on the right uh, the average curves and plus the confidence interval. And on uh, the bottom plots, we can see the same thing, just for excursions. And we can see that the difference holds to any radius that we will pick of the model. So even if we would tweak the algorithm around, the result will still remain. So no one can say, though, you tweak the results or anything like that. It's pretty robust. Okay, uh, because we're lacking time. So 
Overall, here we have a conclusion of the different endpoints we investigated uh, in this paper. Um, I didn't have time to go over all of them, so I just picked the uh, dwell time and excursion. So it's divided into three distinct groups. So excursions and dwell time, the activity of the infants, so we have uh, progression speed, percentage of room covered, and speed outside uh, the mother's vicinity, as well as physical contact with the uh, mother, which, uh, as well as physical, in which we counted the number of physical contacts that each infant has with, with the mother, and the percentage of time that he spent with physical interacting with his mother. And we can see uh, differences in all endpoints. So the TD infants are more, are more active, they cover more of the room, they are faster, and they spend more time with the mother, and not surprisingly, they also spend more time uh, touching the mother. So to conclude, we used a lot of uh, ideas that uh, originated from uh, uh, research regarding uh, mice and flies, and we applied them on uh, human infants. And we found that a major difference in the way that TD infants behave and non-typically developing infants uh, behave. Uh, we believe that this is only the first step and there's still a lot of work to do to extend it. And we have some ideas for the future. So we had only 12 infants and we hope, like you said, recruit a hospital and have a much larger sample size. Technology-wise, we used only a single marker for each infant, and now we have a, a, a different tracking system that allows to track multiple limbs, and not only the infant, but also uh, of the mother. And that's basically it. And I just want to say thank you, Ilan, for hiring me and uh, allowing me to work with you. Um, so I'm not sure that, I can say that we still haven't found it, but I think that it's mostly because, think about how different both experiments are. So we have the infant baby, and we had it, uh, so we, we saw at Yair Wechsler's uh, lecture that he is tracking them, they have 120 excursions because he's tracking them for a few days. And the human infant, we have him only for 30 minutes. So we still hadn't noticed any uh, 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 increase in complexity of excursion, or at least not in all of the infants. So that's one thing that at least we don't find in, in the human infants that can be found in the uh, mice and uh, flies. And another thing is that, from what I know, and it's not too much in regards to zoology, uh, the NTD infants are the only organisms that don't exhibit the home-based uh, behavior that we found so far. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay.
slow in the physical environment is in a system of reference which is Cartesian, whereas the social environment is a polar system. This was suggested by Eichenbach. Now, once you study, or once you have to organize your behavior in relation to both systems, you increase the level of complexity. And Alex Dorfman, in her studies, showed it very nicely that once you have a partner and you have to organize your behavior in relation to the partner, the behavior is less organized and become more, becomes more chaotic because the level of complexity increases. Whereas when you remove the social partner, then the behavior is simpler. <coughs> and it could be that what you show here is that really the entity, which is what you want to see here, cannot cope with the complexity of the environment when they have both the mother and the physical environment and they focus only on the physical environment which is easier to follow. If you have a moving mother, then you will further increase the complexity and this was done, uh, shown very nicely by uh, Emily Benson, a famous rheumatologist from New York, and she does this when the mother moves all the time and it is the homeless. The infant, the infant has all the time to take long trips on a mobile phone. Um, we'll take note of that, but... There was a series of studies by Bluey in the Congo, and uh, they followed the mother chimpanzees with their infants. And they are roaming, they go all over the place, the mothers, and the infants keep going back and forth. And it's a typical uh, behavior for all the primates. Uh, you use mother as a home base, and if mother is moving, they keep uh, coming back to mother, to the to moving target. So the origin is a moving uh, origin. But it's uh, the same behavior in the chimpanzees, uh, and in many monkeys, many species of monkeys who see this behavior. So the, the idea is that origin related animals don't just move like uh, astronauts in space. They always have a reference in origin. Mother or a home base or a rotten piece of a fruit for a fruit fly from the of or a wall or a shelter. And so the origin related behavior is there, but the function of this behavior, like as we know in zoology, structure and function are two separate things. So structure can differ from case to case. So I, for many years, I thought that home based behavior is uh, characterized by growth and differentiation. But uh, maybe not. Maybe the function is different. And there are several studies uh, where, for instance, if mother is reading a newspaper, the infants don't, don't they didn't study, they don't use her as a reference. They go all over the room because uh, mother is busy. So they are polite. What about nomadic species? The what? Nomadic animals. Just But they probably also have the, the head of the room. So, so the so reference may be dynamic. But animals don't, organisms don't move without a reference. And what we have to do is look for the nature of reference. The whole idea is that if you want to measure behavior, go in the footsteps of the organism. The organism has a reference find the nature of reference of the, of the organism and measure behavior in relation to that reference. And if homebase behavior does not show growth, it doesn't have to do with anything. It doesn't have to do with anxiety. There's no situation. So the issue is not anxiety, it's something else. <coughs> so and in some infants we, we see growth and in some we don't. One possibility is that the room is too small. 
data proves to be, but if we have very large room, we also found that the infants are intimidated. They don't go out. So it's complex. But what is uh, special about Mifne is that uh, it is a very intimate, very beautiful place. And uh, there are very nice vibrations there. So suddenly the mothers sense these vibrations. And the inf infants either directly go through the mothers, sense the intimacy of this place, and they show very rich uh, behavior. One very question, uh, you focused on boys, what about girls? I'm curious about the girls. Um, so, first of all, uh, <clears throat> most autism is uh, found in uh, boys, so I guess that's the reason for the uh, uh, our biased sample. And we had one uh, girl in the NTD group, Adva, and but the rest were boys. And like we said, that in the future we hope to recruit recruit a hospital to collaborate with us, and then we'll have access to uh, both sexes. Thank you, Tzviel. Uh, we'll have lunch now, where the uh, refreshments was, um, and we'll assemble again at 2.15. Thank you.